This is the PCV valve. You hear it shaking in there? You should have a valve that's you can hear shaking in there. That means it's brand new and it's good to go. If you don't hear any shaking in there, that means it's all clogged up. Okay, so let's set this aside. These are the hose clamps I bought brand new. You could use, reuse your old one. I mean, it's a couple of bucks. Might as well just change everything to brand spanking new. Here's another one. I ended up buying the hose itself. Just because since we're taking all this stuff out, might as well just put everything brand new instead of reusing old stuff. This is the ventilation hose. That's what it looks like. It's got a foam protective cover over it. Look at this. Here it is. It goes right in here just like this with your hose clamp clamped on. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the car. So I bought two clamps, PCV valve, and a ventilation hose. Just these things to do my PCV valve installation. These are the tools you're gonna need. Uh, most all of this I got from Harbor Freight, except the crow's foot. The crow's foot is a, is a special item that I had to go to an auto parts store to buy. So let's go ahead and get started. You're gonna need a torque wrench to uh, get at least 31 inch pounds, okay? You're gonna need a pair of cutters and some uh, string ties or tie wraps. You're going to need a 10 millimeter. It doesn't have to be a deep socket and any 10 millimeter with a two or three inch extension and a ratchet. Okay. Um, not very important. Um, it's just to remove brackets. Not very important, right? You're going to need about a 10 inch, 10 inch extension. Okay. It doesn't matter if it's a three eighths uh, drive or a half inch drive or, or whatever, as long as it's going to fit all of your adapters, okay? It's gotta fit whatever torque wrench you're gonna use and it's gotta fit your crow's feet. The reason why I do not use a deep socket, uh, and, and I don't care how many people told you that it requires a 22 millimeter deep socket, um, that, that install, you cannot fit a deep socket in there. It's gonna go at a really bad angle and you're gonna end up stripping your PCV valve, okay? Do not use a socket or a deep socket or any kind of socket, it does not fit. What you use is you use a crow's foot. A crow's fit foot works perfect. You could get one with teeth and you, or you could get one just like this, okay? What I did was I used a 7 8 You could use a 22 millimeter. They're about the same thing. A 7 8 worked perfectly fine, okay? 10 inch extension. I used a pair of pliers. You might not need it if you're able to use these instead, okay? I used a flathead screwdriver to help me with some of the, the removals, okay? I used a plastic scraper, and the plastic scraper is good because it helped me, it helped me push the clamps back into its place without ripping the hose. So what I did was I used a pair of pliers, I pinched it, and I used this to help push it along, push it along until this went back to where it's supposed to be at its home, okay? Now here are the special tools that I used and you can find these at Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight sells this long needle nose pliers that you will definitely need for sure, okay? You will also need these hose removers, okay? They're special pliers with uh, rounded um, tips like this so you could remove different size hoses off, okay? This is really good because this is for a small diameter and then you got a medium diameter and then you got a large diameter. See, so in case, and in case uh, a hose gets stuck or something, you can put this around here and you could jiggle it, jiggle it for hard to reach areas. And this was a perfect set from Harbor Freight. I can't, I can't emphasize enough how, this, how much this thing helped. 
and it also helped me uh, push back the foam into place. You're going to find out that there's a lot of foam that's stuck uh, be, uh, around the PCV valve and the, and the ventilation hose that you're going to need to put back into place. The reason why I like this is because it has a big surface area for me to push the foam back in. Um, you're not able to use this because this actually causes damage. This pushes and then it punctures the hole into the foam. This actually helps push the entire foam into its place. So make sure you go to Harbor Freight, buy this kit right here. And it was super cheap. I forgot how much it was, but I think it was like 10 bucks or something. Super cheap. And this, and then um, if you guys need the part numbers for the ventilation hose, and the PCV valve, then uh, just watch the video and uh, I already showed you the, the part numbers in the video itself, okay? Um, as far as the clamps go, I bought the clamps from Lexus, but the problem is for some apparent reason, their clamps would not fit over the brand new hose. It was just too small and I was just struggling. So what I did was I took the clamps off the old hose and I... Um, used it. I used the old clamps for the brand new hose. So just go ahead and use the, the old clamps. It works so much better. You'll save yourself a couple of bucks that way. And believe it or not, um, everything here from Lexus, this was like only like $7. It was super cheap. Okay. That's what you need to do the installation. Want to start off by popping off your cover here by pushing all these buttons in. And slowly lift them up so they come out. I'm going to remove this bracket. It's got two 10 millimeters right here, one right here and one right here. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this plug right here. <clears throat> Got a little flathead screwdriver to help me push this plug out. Some of these plugs have been on here for years and it's been crusted in there, hard to take out. There you go. I'm gonna remove this clamp that's right in back of the oil filler right here. Got a pair of pliers. Move the clamp back a little bit. I'm gonna jiggle this thing until it comes loose. There you go. So in order to move this bracket out of the way, it's caught with a harness right here, an electrical harness right here that's held in with the little clip right here. What I'm gonna use is a pair of pliers and I'm just gonna wiggle it up until it comes loose. After I got that portion loose, I'm gonna take this. I'm not gonna disconnect any more stuff because there's a lot of other stuff that needs to be disconnected if I want things completely out of the way but I just want it out of the way far enough where I have access to my PCV valve. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to string tie it to my upper radiator hose so it stays out of the way. You don't wanna take this metal bracket and flip it off of its bracket underneath here away from this hose. Now we're gonna move it out of the way. 
there we have full access right there next we're going to go ahead and go to the driver's side engine right here This whole big clamp hose right here, we're gonna go ahead and unclamp it, move the clamp up, wiggle this hose out, move it out of the way, and you're gonna see this hose right here that goes beneath the PCB valve. If you follow me, that small hose right there goes right inside this braid and goes beneath there. We want this out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and remove that 10 millimeter bracket right here that holds this hose and I'm going to unclip it right here. Unclip it out of the way. So let's get a 10 millimeter and start loosening that bolt up. Try not to drop it. After you loosen up this clamp right here, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take the whole entire hose and I'm going to move it be in front of the oil filler. Now this keeps this hose out of the way of what I'm gonna try to attempt over here. I want to take the big hose that I removed just to get this clearance. I want to go ahead and plug it back in just so nothing falls in there accidentally. Just leave it in there temporarily and let's move to the front of the vehicle. I'm going to go ahead and loosen the clamp. Bring it back. I'm going to dislodge PCV ventilation hose here by wiggling to get it loose. After you get it loose, you can go ahead and push it back and you can look down and see what you got to work with. It's deep down in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull the foam out. It's going to rip. It has to try to keep it in one piece or two or three pieces as much as possible. Try to pull it out. And when we put everything back, we're just going to shove it back in there. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm going to grab both hands and I'm going to take the foam. I'm going to grab a big chunk of it, try to shove my fingers all the way down here. And I'm going to pull out a big chunk of it as much as possible. Try not, try your best not to rip it. Just keep pulling, pulling. There you go. Look at that. Came out in one piece. Without ripping, well I ripped, but no big deal. Let's take a look at what we have to work with. Look at that angle. So if you take a look at your hose right here, you can pretty much determine how deep you have to go just by looking at the OEM hose. So right here is the bend, right there's the bend. And I'm gonna have to go down about, wow, maybe five, six inches just to reach the PCV valve down here. So now we want this guy out of the way. So we're going to push it and ju I'm just going to, I see a big bolt right here. I'm going to shove it to the side and have that big bolt hold it out of place for me. There you go. See how it just stays right there. Now there's a big, grab something with a big blunt head right here. Not something sharp, but something big blunt. And what you could do is you could take the foam and you could shove it down there. Just shove it down there until your PCB valve is visible. Just keep shoving it down there as far as you can go. And when you're done, I'm guessing we can take a pair of needle nose pliers and we could grab the foam and we could pull it back out instead of pulling out and ripping everything. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep shoving all this down there. Just shove it as deep as it would go so we get access to the PCB valve. See how much access we got so far? Look at that. And there it is, see the clamp? There it is, you got access. There's foam around on that side. Now I would get a needle nose pliers and just take it right here and just keep shoving it down out of the way. Shove these guys out of the way. 
Later when you're done, we're just gonna pull it back into place. This is to prevent pulling it out and just ripping everything apart. Shove it out of the way. Look at that, not bad, not bad. Now we're gonna take a pair of needle nose pliers. We're gonna grab the clamp right there. We're gonna unclamp it and we are going to pull the rest of the hose out. Hold on to the clamp so it doesn't fall right there. This clamp, hold on to it so it doesn't fall on you. There it is. Now what we wanna do is we wanna get your new hose ready. We want the clamp this portion right here, the handles of the clamp, to be facing upward at 12 o'clock, okay? So let's go ahead and put it on there and get it ready, ready to go. Put it all the way until it hits the protective foam right here because what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to shove the PCV valve as far as we can go until it stops right here and then we can move the clamp forward okay here it is move it at 12 o'clock there it is okay now I'm gonna get a 7 8 crow's foot attach it to a 3 8 drives uh, 10 inch extension and I got my ratchet right there ready to go right in there so I'm going to weasel this way in there, just so it fits. There you go. I'm going to spin it until I can get the teeth right on there just perfectly. See, way better than a socket. Fits way better than a socket. You guys see that? I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me bring it up a little bit more. Look how easy that came off. Now I'm going to take it off. I'm going to bring it back to a different teeth right here. Spin it around and try to grab the next set of teeth. And keep spinning it. Just like that. Just keep spinning it until the whole thing comes off. If you could get enough uh, teeth out there, you can go ahead and just grab your needle nose plier and just uh, pull it off if you feel like uh, it completely came off already. Don't worry about dropping this into the engine compartment. It's a really tight cubby down there, so it's not much on where it can actually go or fall into. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. If you got really skinny fingers, I would just get my fingers in there and go ahead and tug on it. There you go. I'm going to stick my hands in there and then do it manually a little bit until I can get the rest of it out. Then I'm going to grab two fingers and I am going to pull it out. It's coming out fairly easy. There it is, it fell into my hands, and there it is, guys. And it's still shaking. So this PCV valve was actually pretty good. Look at it, it wasn't bad at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and install the brand new one. I'm going, I'm going to grab the brand new one. And I'm going to go start threading it with my hands, okay? I'm not going to use any tools. I'm going to stick it down there and start spinning it on with my fingers for a little bit. If you guys have big hands, you might want to put it in with the needle nose pliers first. But I'm going to use two fingers, three fingers to start spinning it on. I want to show you guys where it's at right now. See it? It's hanging right there. I'm gonna go ahead and start spinning it with my fingers. This one, this part's gonna take a little patience because the area is a little tight and you just have to get it on at the right angle. I wouldn't use any tools at this point. You might cross thread it. 
okay. I got on a few threads already and it's going in fairly easy. A lot of people have used uh, fuel hoses and connected a tube down there and used the tube to spin it on. I just found it easier to use my hands since I have small hands I could fit it in there. Uh, you might want to call, uh, I don't know, your, your son or daughter or your wife to actually start the few threads on for you since their hands could fit a lot better if you're a big man. But right now, I got it on pretty good. I'm just going to start spinning it until I can't spin it anymore. Once I get to that point, I'm going to start using my tools to go ahead and spin the rest on. Um, remember, this part right here is 31 inch pounds. I put my crow's foot on there with the extension and I'm actually doing it by hand right now. It's, it's turning fairly easy. I'm just going little by little. Just like that. Just turning it. It's turning fairly easy. Not bad. This job was not bad at all, guys. I got my torque wrench here at 31 inch pounds. I'm going to go ahead and click it. Click it about three times just to make sure we're good. I'm going to go ahead and take it off now. I'm just going to go back in there by hand just one more time just to make sure. And everything looks good. Okay, I'm grabbing my OEM hose now with the clamp facing at 12 o'clock. You can put it at 12 o'clock or you can put it at 1 o'clock. Either way is fine. Just remember it goes in this way. The right angle is at the top of the engine. This little tiny slant is at the bottom. Okay, So you're going to take this hole and you're going to try to push it in as far as it can go. Just remember the clamp goes all the way up here until it hits the foam. Okay. And if you need help, you could go ahead and grab your special hose remover and put it over there and to help it along to push it down. That's what I bought this for. There you go. Help to push it down some more. After you push the hose in as far as it can go and it's at a stop, now you're going to want to get a pair of needle nose pliers and go ahead and and take the clamp right there and push the clamp forward. Pinch it in and push it forward. There you go. Pretty tight. Clamp. Once you Pinch that clamp and push it in as far as you can go. Now you're going to want to take your needle nose plier and grab all the foam that you've been pushing down and bring it back to the top. Bring them all back to the top. See that? And if you're ripping them apart, go ahead and throw them away. Just be careful. Pinch as much as you can. Don't just pinch a little bit. Pinch a big chunk of it and just pull it lightly to the top. Next, I'm not, I'm not going to attach this yet because I need this to be out of the way for me to shove this piece of foam back in. Remember at the beginning, I took this piece of foam. On the piece of foam, you're going to see this arrow. This arrow points forward, forward of the car. So what we're going to do is we are going to lift this up and push this up and we're going to shove this underneath because that hose is supposed to sit right on this ramp right here, okay? So this portion of the video, we're going to grab some needle nose pliers and this other hose remove plier because I like it has this big surface for me to push the foam in without damaging it. This will damaging it, so this has a, a separate purpose, okay? So we're going to use both and we're going to see how each one works, okay? So we're going to lift this up, we're going to lift it up and we're going to shove this in there. When we shove it in there, we're going to take this needle nose right here. We're going to help it along. Back in there. There you go. It's working out fairly well. It sits very nicely. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Not bad. 
Not bad at all. Not bad at all. We are going to take our new clamp, our second clamp, put it on the top here, slide it through the holes. Slide it all the way and then go ahead and install the top. Once you install the top, go ahead and move that clamp back. If you guys are finding out that the clamp is just way too tight, I would use a plastic scraper and I would squeeze the clamp and use the plastic scraper to help push it along, trying not to damage your hose right there, okay? Next, I would take whatever was left of your foam piece that you ripped out at the beginning and I would just shove it down there. Trust me, it's not going to fly out, guys. It's a really, really tight fit down there. Okay, start shoving it down there. Got some more right here. Look at that, guys. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and start putting everything back. Start off by cutting your zip tires if you used one. Let's get everything back where it's supposed to be. Okay, let's bring everything back out in the open. You got all this, okay. And remember, remember that hose that you moved out of the way. Just for access, remember that hose? This one right here, you're going to want to bring it back. Bring it back over where it belongs. There you go. And put it back on onto its white clamp right here. There you go. And remember this white bracket. It's supposed to line up with the 10 millimeter bracket down here. Let's go ahead and get all this stuff out of the way first because you don't want to start to um, bury yourself. There you go. Line up all your holes. See that? Your 10 millimeter bolt goes right in there. Lines up perfectly. I don't know if you guys could see that. You're going to want to start putting that 10 millimeter bolt back in. I got my 10 millimeter bolt right here. I'm going to go ahead and put on my deep socket. And I'm going to help it along. Do it by hand first. I always do stuff by hand anyways. You never know when you're going to start stripping stuff. Do everything by hand first, guys. When in doubt. Ratchet that in. Remember this huge hose? Let's go ahead and plug it back in where it belongs. Okay, we're going to need a needle nose plier to put this clamp back on. There you go. Next, we're going to take our bracket, the one we took off at the very beginning, and we're going to line it up with these two holes right here. You see that? Remember, underneath here is a clip. You want to take your big bracket right here and clip it underneath there and line it up with the two holes at the same time. Right, another bracket clip right here, hose clip right there. Bam. You're going to want to plug this guy in. Oops, did I do that upside down? Yes, I did. There you go. This guy right here goes back inside its little screw cap down here. Just push it in. Let's go ahead and tie these down with uh, two bolts, okay? Here he goes, the two 10 millimeter bolts. The, the thing I forgot to tell you guys is when you guys remove this and start moving brackets out of the way, it's always a good idea to put these bolts back in its home so later on you can go back to it without, you know, looking for them like I just did. I spent like five minutes trying to look for them all over the garage floor okay do it in by hand first make sure you get in about three or four threads okay let's go ahead and tighten them down when you guys are done you're going to want to start go ahead go inside the car and start the engine and listen for weird noises and you're going to uh, check for a check engine lights that pop on
listen for some weird rattling, weird noises. Okay, what I was checking for was some weird noises, weird uh, clanking noises, any um, escaping air or hissing sounds or vacuum leaks or anything that just sounded out of the ordinary. So everything sounds fine. I stepped on the gas quite a few times to see if anything would pop off and start making weird sounds and everything sounds good. I'm going to go out for a test drive and uh, check back with you guys. <coughs> there you guys have it. Uh, PCV remove and installation. Um, when I first looked into this, uh, which was a very, very long time ago, I was probably like most of you guys looking at it and then looking at the engine compartment and, and realizing, holy smokes, I got to pretty much remove everything except drop the engine just to put in this six, seven dollar part. Is it really worth it? So when I first started looking around at that engine compartment and start doing all my research online on on, on alternative ways to uh, remove it, um, I did it little by little by little until I finally figured out that it's not as hard as everybody thinks it is. It's actually super easy. If I wasn't recording all this, um, I think it would have taken me maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes the most. It's a super, very super easy installation. If you're going to follow the Lexus um, schematics on how to remove it, they're going to tell you to remove the intake manifold and, I don't know, drop the transmission and all this other stuff to charge you a thousand bucks just to replace this seven dollar part. But in all seriousness, the only thing you really needed was 45 minutes out of your day on a, on a beautiful Saturday and, and a set of special tools from Harbor Freight. And that's about it. All the parts that I bought from Lexus, I bought it from uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, Bell Lexus, which uh, gave me free shipping if I purchased it from them. And the entire cost of all the parts, including tax, was under $30 to replace this PCV valve. You're probably wondering, you're looking at your scheduled maintenance and nowhere on there it tells you to go ahead and replace the PCV valve. All you see is oil change, transmission replace, brake change, but you never see this, okay? Because this right here, if you're wondering if you need to replace this or not, you can go online on Google and find out what a PCV valve does to your car and you're going to realize that if this thing gets clogged up in your engine, this little six, seven dollar piece of it gets clogged up into your engine, it could do a lot of havoc it can create your engine seals to bust and leak okay and and once your engine seals start leaking because of all the pressure that built up because of this clogged thing right here of clogged sludge right here it's it's gonna cost a lot of money um and it's gonna be like looking for a needle in a haystack trying to find out where that engine leak is coming from and and i guarantee you 99 percent of the mechanics out there are going to tell you um the main crankshaft seal is gone and you need to replace it and it's not true it's that that's that you probably have to replace it because this caused it your your seals popped because because this clogged up when do you need to replace this there there's really no magic number guys the sooner the better if you guys notice mine still makes a clanking sound meaning it's really good it's not stuck and clogged yet and i have about 80 83,000 miles on my car already. Um, I'm going to guess if your car is hitting over 100,000 miles, it's 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 time you guys start looking into this little $6 piece, $7 piece right here and, and give it a fair share of your time on a Saturday because this will eventually cause um, havoc into your engine, okay? I hope this helped a lot of you guys um, tackle this and not be afraid, okay? All right, GX Bob here. Thank you for watching. You guys notice I didn't cuss at all in this video? That's from all that hate emails you guys been sending, man. I'm, I'm trying to mature. I'm trying. Not there yet, but I'm trying. God damn, that was good.